Hi everyone, this is Steve. Welcome to this edition of Monday Morning Musings. Today, we are going to talk about Luther, the anti-Semite. Luther is not responsible for European anti-Semitism. Anti-Semitism in Europe had a long history before Luther came on the scene. As an example of that, I'm going to put up a picture here. This is a very well-known sculpture. It's called the Judensau. It's on a 13th century church in Wittenberg, the city where Luther preached, and he preached in this church in his day. And you can see what a disgusting image it is. It's a picture of a rabbi looking up a pig's anus with some uh, Jewish people sucking on uh, the pig's teats, and that's right over the door of a church, and that's from the 13th century. It's disgusting. And I know it's unfair to project on Martin Luther to behave like us, but can you imagine going into a church with that over the door and being okay with it? So no, he's not responsible for European anti-Semitism. Nor is he responsible for creating Hitler's anti-Semitism. Hitler had anti-Semitism without Luther. However, is Luther responsible for facilitating, abetting, encouraging, pouring lighter fluid on the fire of anti-Semitism in the sense giving Hitler uh, uh, ethical and theological legs for anti-Semitism to stand on? Yes, he did. And yes, he is responsible. He was, quote unquote, Luther, um, Hitler's theologian. Now, we're living in the day when everybody wants to tear down a statue if there's a negative connotation of some sort that offends somebody. And if we keep that up, there'll be nothing left. There'll be no history. But I am going to actually read, I know it's not going to be very exciting, video watching, but it's so disturbing that I'm going to read it to you verbatim. Now, here's what happened. Luther was so arrogant and so sure of himself and his doctrine that he really and truly believed that he had discovered the last day pure doctrine, that it was embodied in him. And that because now, you know, the darkness of the, the Roman church is gone. I'm on the scene and I'm, and I'm speaking like Luther. I'm here and boy, this is going to change the world. And in that way, he sounds like a lot of modern charismatics who are getting direct downloads. He was basically proclaiming he had a direct download and now it's the last days. And early Luther expected the effect of his teaching to be, because it's so wonderful, that the, the Jews would be converted to Christ through his preaching and his doctrine, and then the end would come. Man, it's so similar to the stuff that we still hear today, and it's always going to be that way. It's always going to be a problem when you have one guy who thinks he's getting direct downloads from God. And like we talked in one of the other sessions, not interested in partnering or submitting to anybody. You have one guy who has a pipeline with God who's going to change the world. Well, that didn't happen. And Brother Luther got very upset. And he had a very severe change of heart. And it was kind of very Augustinian because he was an Augustinian monk. And it goes like this. Well, you know, Better to burn them and kill them than to have them to a lost uh, forever and eternal fires. You know, better to use force to convert them that, uh, on this side of, of the grave than to have them suffer eternally. I mean, that's the, the uh, oversimplified version of Augustine's just war theory and Augustine's, you, uh, you know, 
Augustine and Luther's consent to use force to try to converse, pe convert people. We'll talk about the Spanish Inquisition later and so forth. So when the Jews didn't come running en masse to Brother Luther declaring how great his teaching was, he flipped. And I want to read his seven propositions, seven things that Luther proposed regarding the Jews. Verbatim, these are his words. Number one, first, set fire to their synagogues and their schools. Light them all on fire. Geez, I wonder who did that. Second, I advise that their houses also be razed and destroyed. Third, I advise that all their prayer books and Talmudic writings in which such idolatry, lies, cursing, and blasphemy are taught be taken from them. Fourth, I advise that their rabbis be forbidden to teach henceforth on pain of laws of life and limb. Otherwise, if a Jewish rabbi teaches, we get him and we kill him. Fifth, I advise that safe conduct on the highways be abolished completely for Jews. They have no business being in the countryside, otherwise uh, free travel, commerce, even spreading their faith. Sixth, I advise that usury or charging interest be prohibited to them and that all cash, treasure, silver, and gold be taken from them. Who do you know in mid-20th century who bid on that one pretty hard? Part of my angst and anxiety is, you know, we're all tight in our diapers over Hitler, and he, and, and you know, every, oh, Hitler, Hitler, Hitler. And nobody talks about Luther, Luther, Luther. Luther thought it up before Hitler did. Seventh, I recommend putting a flail, an axe, a hoe, a spade, a diff staff, or a spindle into the hands of the young and strong Jews and Jewesses and let them earn their bread in the sweat of their brow. But if we are afraid they might harm us, then let us emulate the common sense of every other nation and eject them from our country forever. Work camps and deportation. Friends, that's your hero. That's your man. If you're a Protestant, you have to own that. And don't go down this road with me. I'm not a Protestant and I'm not a Catholic. I just follow Jesus. I'm a Jesus follower. I don't use any labels. That's nonsense. The Bible that you are reading came from the Protestant Reformation through Luther and the Reformers. You are Protestant. There's only three options. Roman Catholic, Greek Orthodox, or not those. And if you're not those, or in some of the minor, or the Coptics and so forth like that, some of the Middle Eastern virgins, you are a Protestant. And it is dishonest of you to try to distance yourself by a cornball, flimsy, uh, individualistic, and pietistic cliche about, well, I'm just a follower of Jesus. No, you're a Protestant. And you need to own the dark side of your own history, excuse me, and you need to do some reflection on why your churches and your Bible school teacher and your pastor, your bishop, your apostle never told you these things. That's because it rocks the boat. And there's too much to lose. So no, we can't blame it on him. But he sure contributed to one of the darkest moments in human 
history. And I'm sorry, for me, that's a disqualifier. That means no Mount Rushmore. Like the other series, the other episode a few weeks back where the gentleman wanted to put him in with Isaac Newton and Galileo and Einstein. Nah, that's a disqualifier. That's not somebody who has, you know, just a little deviation on, on a point of doctrine, a little bit of variation in a point of doctrine. That's somebody with a deep character malignancy, even considering the, the times in which he lived, that he wasn't that unique. He was actually, you could say, a prototype of the climate. He was very much a man of his climate and time. And what makes it so doubly heinous is he gave it a, a semblance of sanctity. So after he had gained some, some stature, he unloads that garbage and... The Holocaust is not a direct result, but he sure did put pour uh, the gasoline on it. So think about it, pray about it, weep about it, and I'll see you the next time.